Hello my friends, let's go straight to Avdivka. The situation develops very fast over there. Russia propels towards the city. You can see that their attack vector goes directly to the town and the fight is already happening in this part of Avdivka. Indeed, they made a huge advancement for the last three days, but still they are unable to establish full control over this territory. We may call it a gray zone or the gray area where the fight is ongoing and it's hard to say to whom this territory belongs. Well, the good thing that it's not that easy for Russians and later on in this video I'm gonna explain you why. There is also a chance that Russia will try to advance from this place and also from this side crossing the railroad. By doing so, they might try to encircle our forces somewhere in this local village. Definitely, this distance is not that big, but again, it's the distance between the gray area. Russia controls all of that red stuff. It means that the Ukrainian forces are presented over here and over here as well. Let's check out the elevation here. It is more or less flat terrain. It goes down to the city. It means that Russia has the advantage using the higher ground. Before they tried to attack from this place, but this attack was not really successful for them, that's why they choose the other direction, also to bypass the natural obstacle, the river, which finishes somewhere over here. So they want to go directly to the city without necessity of crossing the river. Also, they have one more vector of attack directly from this village. Let's go to the place. Today they were able to take some of the ground out there, and the terrain is not flat. There are different valleys, the river again, and the city goes a little bit up, so Russia has no terrain advantage i would say in this place also there are some of the lakes so it's very difficult for them to propel southbound guys before reviewing this military map let me tell you about the partner and also the long-term sponsor of my channel yes it is the atlas vpn they have a super deal which they made especially for my followers where you may get the atlas vpn premium just for 149 per month plus you'll obtain 12 months extra. If you use internet, I'm sure you are because you are watching my videos and you do not use the VPN service, well, it's kind of strange nowadays because it secures the data and has many more other features. Using the Atlas VPN, I may change my virtual location and may call from any kind of country, as well as Netflix. Some of the content is not available for some of the countries, so using Atlas VPN may open you new borders for the streaming services as Netflix. And by changing your virtual location on Atlas VPN, you may purchase the airline ticket with great discount as well as booking apartments for your holidays somewhere. So now, my friends, please check out my personal link in the video description just below or scan the QR code available on the screen where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium with astonishing discount for just $149 per month plus 12 months extra. The super deal is valid just for my followers, so hurry up to join the club. All right, let's go to the place and check out the timeline. So it was yesterday and it is today. Russia advanced in this forest. But if we check the last three days, you may see how far Russian army went in this forest, taking its territories under control. But they are under constant attacks by Ukrainian army and especially drones, FPV drones. Guys, sadly, I am unable to show you the particular drone image because Russia advances mostly with infantry, so this platform will be against those kind of the videos. But the general idea which I wanted to say that the advancement for the Russian army is not even close to be easy. They take the ground only by wasting lots of their forces. The Ukrainian side is not able to afford those kind of the losses similar to Russians. That is why our army is forced to retreat. And let's check the advancement of the Russian army from Kamenka. So it was yesterday and it is today. Honestly, I thought that they advanced more, but they just crossed this river which is also a great achievement for them but they are on a lower ground so they do not have the terrain advantage over ukrainian forces because of the difficult terrain i do not expect their attack to be very fast in this place but there are also some of the good sides about the avdivka situation in general the only supply road that goes to avdivka is still intact and russia is unable to advance towards it. All of their attack attempts towards the road basically failed. It means that Ukraine is able to supply Avdivka town for a very long time. However, if Ukraine wouldn't have enough munition from our allies, 
our guys would have to withdraw from Avdivka maybe next month or during the spring time. Sadly, but it is truth, we are unable to withstand against the constant mid wave attacks by the Russian Federation, which mostly been demolished, but they go again and again, they do not look at their losses, and that is the way they are able to achieve some of their results. Not huge results, I might say, but still, they take the ground. Avdivka is more important for Ukraine compared to Bakhmut because it's very close to Donetsk, so in perspective Ukraine might use this direction to advance towards the biggest city that was occupied by the Russian Federation. But for now, obviously, this variant is not possible. And now let's go to the Kupens direction where Russia also has the success taking Krohmanne under control. They also took this part of the road just in a couple of days. Let's go to the timeline. So it was the day before yesterday and for two days they advanced quite a lot. Judging on the scale of this movement, I would say that Ukraine wasn't really ready for this Russian attack. Russia tried many times to get Sinkivka under control and I think that they moved their forces towards this place because they did some of the surveillance and they found the weakest spot of Ukrainian defense. Now Ukraine should send more reinforcements. By the way, Russia already advanced somewhere in this place, as I remember near to Novoselovska, but later on Russia was pushed back and Ukraine regained the control over the lost ground. And those are the Russian soldiers in Krohmalne village. Definitely they took the village under their control, there are no any doubts about it. Also you may see how the Russian equipment evolved, they have proper helmets, boots and bulletproof vests. We may see a huge upgrade of the Russian equipment for the ordinary soldier since 2022. It means that they are learning on their own mistakes that they've done before. It is not good obviously for us, but we also need to improve each time. Some of the Russian sources say that the Russian army already went into the central part of Avdivka town. They even show this video how the Russian soldiers are going somewhere and next they put this video. Definitely it is Avdivka, but this particular video was filmed by Ukrainian soldiers not the Russians. So again, TikTok army wants to show some advancement, mostly in internet and I understand why they are doing it, to spread the disinformation that will be shared, for example, on X, Twitter or a Facebook, whatever. One more cringe video from the TikTok Ahmad Battalion. As you can see, they have many of the flags, the Russian, the Ahmad flag, and there was also the USSR flag. So it's complete nonsense to put all of that stuff together, but it seems like they're okay with it. So what they say that they are sending new forces to fight in Ukraine. So this is the USSR flag, very, very Chechen original, I would say. And they're ready, okay, we're gonna fight for what? For what religion, let's say, you are fighting for? Here's Illusion 76, the Russian transport airplane and those warriors are getting ready to board it and video being interrupted just after the boarding. Probably they filmed it just like that, later on they went from the airplane. I'm sure that it was a propaganda video because here are the contact numbers that were blurred but there were some. Call and join the Russian army, that is why they had so many flags, depends on the religion that you follow, if you are communist, if you are Russian imperial list or if you are a TikTok fan. This is the Russian city of Tula and while I'm recording this video we got the report about some big kaboom. As locals report the Russian military factory was attacked where Russia produces lots of the weaponry. The factory name is Shogolovsky Val. They produce the Panzer S air defense systems and also some of the drones. A Ukrainian military intelligence chief Budanov says that there will be more attacks on the Russian infrastructure in the nearby future including Crimea. As many analytics say, Ukraine has to do it because without the military resources, Ukraine has to cut the Russian infrastructure, powder factories, oil reservoirs and military facilities. Russia sends more nukes to Belarus, this time for the Iskander rocket systems. A self-proclaimed president of Belarus, Lukashenko, already said that he might use those missiles against Poland because he thinks 
that Poland might start the attack on Belarus territory. In general, Belarus has already been occupied by the Russian Federation, so Putin is looking for the similar scenario for Ukraine. He wants to connect the part of the territory to the Russian Federation and leave some part for Ukrainian so-called independence, which will obey every Russian order. Meanwhile, President Zelensky doesn't see any chance for the peace agreement with the current Russian regime and with Putin personally. Mainly, no side is able to achieve the military victory on the front lines, yes, Russia now takes the initiative as we see, but still they are far from reaching their main goal, the occupation of Ukraine. Now it looks impossible for Russia. As well as for Ukraine to liberate all of its territories, it means that the war will continue for several years for sure. A cringe of the day. I had to put some of the censorship on Vern's because the YouTube policy is quite strict. So this woman survived the Russian attack on the Mariupol mature house back in 2022. She was pregnant at that time and later on gave the birth to her son, as I remember. But later on she went to the self-proclaimed Republic of DPR and later on to the Russian Federation. And she became a pro-Russian media activist. Yes, she was nearly killed by Russians. The Ukrainian side helped her with her treatment, but later on she took the Russian passport and started to praise Putin. Today she put her signature under the document for the future Putin's elections. It is like a formality for the Russian candidate to run for elections to have the signatures from the people. She betrayed her country, her people and became a propaganda symbol for the Russian Federation. Unfortunately, there were some of the people with this mindset in Mariupol. Not many, but still mostly from the older generation who used to live in the Soviet Union. At the same time, if we check out the Russian sources from that time, they called this woman an actress. She played a role. And the Russian officials say that it was the Azov base in that mature house. There were no any patients which is complete nonsense as we see it right now. Some say that the Russian soldiers have no choice rather than to go and fight in Ukraine. But there is always an alternate. For example, six Russian soldiers were jailed for two years, not in prison, but in a local habitation colony. It means that they will have normal flats and basically TV and other stuff. Those were actual Russian soldiers who refused to fight in Ukraine. Not mobilized soldiers, no, professional contract Russian soldiers. So they will spend a couple of years in quite comfortable environment. They will be even allowed to meet with their relatives each weekend. And the most important thing that they will stay alive and will not kill anyone else. I guess that it is a best solution for the Russian soldier. Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania are going to build the defense line all across their borders with Belarus and with Russia. I believe that Putin has ambitions to occupy the ex-Soviet countries. So building a defense is the proper thing to do, because Ukraine wasn't really ready for the full-scale war with Russia. The defense lines were not built on the north and on the south. That allowed Russia to occupy lots of the territories. The White House officials warned the members of Congress about a very bad circumstances for Ukraine and for democracy in general if the military aid for Ukraine wouldn't be voted very soon. I think that the information is coming from the Jake Sullivan. He says that Ukraine will be defeated in that case very fast, in a few months. Well, I disagree with that conclusion. Even without the military help from the United States, we still have the partners in the European Union. And the other countries, for example, Canada, UK and Australia. However, if Ukraine will be out of the military help from the United States, obviously it will lose more ground, but will not lose in general. The best investment in stability of the world and in democracy is the investment into Ukrainian military. My friends, don't forget to press your big like to this video. By doing so, you help me a lot. And also, please don't forget to check my personal link in the video description just below, where you may find the Atlas VPN with a huge discount that was made especially for my followers. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.